South Wales, abbreviated as NSW, is a state on the east coast of Australia. It borders Queensland to the north, Victoria to the south, South Australia to the west, the Tasman Sea to the east and surrounds the whole of the Australian Capital Territory. New South Wales' capital city is Sydney, which is also the nation's most populous city. In March 2014, the estimated population of New South Wales was 7.5 million, making it Australia's most populous state. Just under two-thirds of the state's population, 4.67 million, live in the Greater Sydney area. Inhabitants of New South Wales are referred to as New South Welshmen. The colony of New South Wales was founded in 1788. It originally comprised a much larger area of the Australian mainland and also included Lord Howe Island, New Zealand, Norfolk Island and Van Diemen's Land. During the 19th century, large areas were separated to form the British colonies of Tasmania, South Australia, New Zealand, Victoria. Queensland and the Northern Territory, 1863. Lord Howe Island remains part of New South Wales, while Norfolk Island has become a federal territory, as have the areas now known as the Australian Capital Territory and the Jervis Bay Territory. History Aborigines, Indigenous People the original inhabitants of New South Wales were the Aboriginal tribes who arrived in Australia about 40,000 to 60,000 years ago. Before European settlement there were an estimated 250,000 Aboriginal people in the region. The Wodi Wodi people are the original custodians of the Illawarra region of South Sydney. Speaking a variant of the Darawa language. The Wodi Wodi people lived across a large stretch of land which was roughly surrounded by what is now known as Campbelltown, Shoalhaven River and Moss Vale. The Bunjalung people are the original custodians of parts of the northern coastal areas. 1788 British Settlement The European discovery of New South Wales was made by Captain James Cook during his 1770 survey along the unmapped eastern coast of the Dutch-named continent of New Holland, now Australia. In his original journals covering the survey, in triplicate to satisfy Admiralty orders, Cook first named the land New Wales. However, in the copy he held by the Admiralty, he revised the wording to New South Wales. The first British settlement was made by what is known in Australian history as the First Fleet, this was led by Captain Arthur Phillip, who assumed the role of Governor of the Settlement on arrival in 1788 until 1792. After years of chaos, anarchy and the overthrow of Governor William Bly, a new Governor, Lieutenant Colonel, later Major General, Lachlan Macquarie, was sent from Britain to reform the settlement in 1809. During his time as governor, Macquarie commissioned the construction of roads, wharves, churches and public buildings, sent explorers out from Sydney and employed a planner to design the street layout of Sydney. Macquarie's legacy is still evident today. Mid-1800s, during the 19th century, Large areas were successively separated to form the British colonies of Tasmania, proclaimed as a separate colony named Van Diemen's Land in 1825, South Australia, 1836, Victoria, 1851, and Queensland, 1859. Responsible government was granted to the New South Wales colony in 1855. Following the Treaty of Waitangi, William Hobson declared British sovereignty over New Zealand in 1840. In 1841, it was separated from the colony of New South Wales to form the new colony of New Zealand. Charles Darwin visited Australia in January 1836 and in the voyage of the Beagle. Chapter 19 of the 11th edition, records his hesitations about and fascination with New South Wales, 
including his speculations about the geological origin and formation of the Great Valleys, the Aboriginal population, the situation of the convicts, and the future prospects of the country. 1901 Federation of Australia At the end of the 19th century, the movement toward federation between the Australian colonies gathered momentum. Conventions and forums involving colony leaders were held on a regular basis. Proponents of New South Wales as a free trade state were in dispute with the other leading colony Victoria, which had a protectionist economy. At this time customs posts were common on borders, even on the Murray River. Traveling from NSW to Victoria in those days was very difficult. Supporters of Federation included the NSW Premier Sir Henry Parks whose 1889 Tenterfield speech, given in Tenterfield, was pivotal in gathering support for NSW involvement. Edmund Barton, later to become Australia's first Prime Minister, was another strong advocate for Federation and a meeting held in Cora in 1893 drafted an initial constitution. In 1898 popular referendums on the proposed federation were held in NSW, Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. All votes resulted in a majority in favour, but the NSW government under Premier George Reid, popularly known as Yes No Reid because of his constant changes of opinion on the issue, had set a requirement for a higher yes vote than just a simple majority which was not met. In 1899 further referendums were held in the same states as well as Queensland, but not Western Australia. All resulted in yes votes with majorities increased from the previous year. NSW met the conditions its government had set for a yes vote. As a compromise to the question on where the capital was to be located, an agreement was made that the site was to be within NSW but not closer than 100 miles. 161 kilometers from Sydney, while the provisional capital would be Melbourne. Eventually the area that now forms the Australian Capital Territory was ceded by NSW when Canberra was selected. Early 20th century, in the years after World War I, the high prices enjoyed during the war fell with the resumption of international trade. Farmers became increasingly discontented with the fixed prices paid by the compulsory marketing authorities set up as a wartime measure by the Hughes government. In 1919 the farmers formed the Country Party, led at national level by Earl Page, a doctor from Grafton, and at state level by Michael Brexner, a small farmer from Tenterfield. The Great Depression, which began in 1929 ushered in a period of political and class conflict in New South Wales. The mass unemployment and collapse of commodity prices brought ruin to both city workers and to farmers. The beneficiary of the resultant discontent was not the Communist Party, which remained small and weak, but Jack Lang's labor populism. Lang's second government was elected in November 1930 on a policy of repudiating New South Wales debt to British bondholders and using the money instead to help the unemployed through public works. This was denounced as illegal by Conservatives, and also by James Scullin's federal Labour government. The result was that Lang's supporters in the federal caucus brought down Scullin's government causing a second bitter split in the Labour Party. In May 1932 the governor, Sir Philip Game dismissed his government. The subsequent election was won by the Conservative opposition. By the outbreak of World War II in 1939, the differences between New South Wales and the other states that had emerged in the 19th century had faded as a result of federation and economic development behind a wall of protective tariffs. Citation needed, New South Wales continued to outstrip Victoria as the center of industry, and increasingly of finance and trade as well. Citation needed. Labour returned to office under the moderate leadership of William McKell in 1941 and remained in power for 24 years. 
World War II saw another surge in industrial development to meet the needs of a war economy, and also the elimination of unemployment. Thank you.